Hey everyone, uh, so this is just a quick video to explain a couple of things and, and give a bit of tips as far as setting a template um, as well as uh, defining a folder structure. So um, I'll start with the folder structure and go from there. So there are two ways of defining a folder structure. Um, at the moment I just have one sheet, uh, but let's just do two. So I can go right click here at the top and select tree control properties and I can go under sorting and define uh, to sort by document type or any other attribute for that matter. Um, by sorting it this way, uh, if I hit OK, if my sheet properties has document type, um, yeah, let's say this is a schematic, uh, it will automatically throw it in that folder. The challenge here is um, the following, um, doing it this method it will show us um, sheet name one of two even though there's only one in this folder. Um, so this will show the total which is the number of sheets. Uh, there's also an attribute which you can modify this in database editor to show the number of sheets in folder. Um, but this will only work for a structure as opposed to just sorting it in this way. So. To get around that we can right click up here and go to project properties and we can find a, a structure template. So this structure template is located on the C drive if you've got a, um, a 2019 or newer it's located in C users um, public public documents uh, Zirkin 2019 and then structure template. So in the structure template there are a few, I've added these three um, which I'll explain now. So the defaults are here um, as well as these two, like I said I've added these three. So um, my document type XML is the one that I want to use just to show the document type folders like, like I did before. If I edit this in Notepad I will show you. So basically it's not very um, complicated at all. Uh, this template or this um, format can be used for any attribute name. Um, basically attribute name document type um, so it will pick up the first folder as a document type um, etc. Um, so in choosing this one and by comparison I guess if you want to buy function it will look something like this. Um, this is the function. You can see here it's using the assignment um, as a, the main definer for the folder. Um, so I'll select this one which is my document type XML, hit open, hit apply and OK. So in this case if I go back to my tree control properties and sorting, make sure to sort by the given structure. Uh, you can see it's using the document type in here. Um, as a definer and once again it's showing me um, one. So just to show, uh, let me just edit this one here or rather I'll just create a new one and I'm just going to update this to include the folder. So simply I'm just going to call this uh, in a3 uh, no, a3 folder or with folder just for argument's sake um, so simply down here instead of this one I can double click if again if you've got 2019 or newer otherwise if you have an older version you can right click and go to text properties um, and then where it says number of sheets I can simply choose number of sheets in folder hit OK and then save the database. So back in my project uh, I can change this sheet. I'll just hit F5 in my database to refresh and you can see A3 with folder. I can go to my sheet properties and I can choose my A3 uh, A3 with folder. Hit apply and now you can see I've got sheet one of one. If I create another sheet in here and I'll call this say sheet two um, and I'll change my document type and 
you can see one ELC equal. Oops, make sure I use the right sheet. Definitely help. So we've got sheet two of two, sheet one of two, and this one will be just the total. So there's three sheets and this is sheet name two. Um, so make sure, I guess, when you're choosing the new sheet that you choose the correct one. Uh, if I go three now, I'll bring it in here like this. And then you can see sheet three of three. Um, sheet one of three, sheet two of three. So relatively straightforward. Um, so with this structure, uh, this is my default structure for argument's sake. I want my structure to include, say, a cover sheet. Oops, no spaces. So I want the first sheet, which is just going to be the cover underscore sheet. We cannot have any spaces. And then I'm going to have a subfolder with schematic to begin with, with three sheets. So every time I open up a new project, I want it to include this sheet, um, which is going to be this one um, with my total. And then these three in the sheets that they're already on um, and again with this structure um, at the same time I do also want to go to my settings and I want to go around and change some of the settings just to clean things up um, I normally recommend to, to have resized text to fit text box this is another one that's pretty handy I do also normally change my highlight um, jump to 70 or something like that so it doesn't zoom in so much when I find something I also increase the scroll speed because the standard speed is pretty slow if I hold control and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Um, the other thing <coughs> I normally recommend is under connection core wires, I normally use the physical data of the cavity so it picks up the data and the constraints of the pin terminal to choose or to I guess allow the correct wire or rather the other way around. It uses the data of the um, that you're assigning to choose the correct pin terminal if there is one that exists uh, and then the last one I normally do is under dimension I clean this up a bit where I want my net segment manufacturing length I don't really care about the dimensions on the page <coughs> excuse me I had a suffix is millimeters in my case because <coughs> it's millimeters I don't really care about precision beyond zero I had a slight offset so the dimension slightly off the line and then I guess here yeah, you can do an extension line or whatever else you might want to do. Um, but that's pretty much the most of the base settings I start off with um, and I hit apply and OK. So these settings, again, is, these are my base settings that I want for all my projects. Uh, if I go again to tool settings, uh, you can see here under general it has a template. So this template file, again, is what we're sort of leading up to uh, is the initial settings that can be read from this particular file. So every time we open up a project, from scratch you'll pick up this project IEC template file which includes the structure here um, with the, these four pages including the sheets on the pages um, as we've done and at the same time um, all the settings that we've done so to do so it's relatively straightforward we can hit file save as uh, I can go and find that same folder and see users public public documents and again, this, if you have um, an older version, so 2018 or below, it will show up in your program files. If you've got 2019 or 2020 or 2021, when it's due to come out, um, it will show up in this folder. <coughs> so if I go to my 2019 and I go down below and I change my type from E3S to an E3T, which is the template file, you'll notice there's some there already, but I'm just going to call this my default. Uh, structure or default template um, and I'm just going to do IEC as a trigger to remind myself that it's an IEC I can simply hit save and then if I go back to my settings and I will path to that one so again I'll go to my C users public public documents Zukin E3 2019 and I can choose this default template IEC which I just created and hit open. So if I just click OK now um, and again this can be uh, both the XML and the uh, template file considered on a server for multiple people to use the same one. Uh, if I close this project now 
and not save the changes. If I open up a brand new project from scratch, you'll notice I already have these. My cover sheet, which would be cover sheet of four. Um, and I also have my um, sheet one of three, two of three, three of three. And if I go to my settings, uh, which I can just use shortcut C, again, if I go to say the display, you can see those are ticked. Same as anything else that I've changed, those settings will retain. So from now on, every time I start a new project, these settings will be here as well as this folder structure. So it saves me changing everything and going from there. Um, just be mindful if you do need to change your folder structure as you go along, uh, make sure there are no components in here. Specifically, there is nothing in your device tree. If it's intentional that you do want to, that's fine. But if you've, um, you know, normally best to start up a blank project. If you have something in here, um, for example, if you dragged something in and then you deleted it, it would still be sitting in your device tree unless you purge unused. So you might start a new project and then you bring in your first connector and you realize it's X2 um, because obviously that X1 is still sitting in your device tab. So if you start a new project um, from scratch, change your settings, um, make sure there's nothing under your device tab and then that way you can save the template file to read from from there. Um, just another little tip, um, just based on the setting that I did, you'll notice this cover sheet uh, is not very nice. It's sort of going over. So if I go back to my sheet, and in this case I can jump to symbol miscellaneous tree. If you have an older version, so 2016, 2017, you'll need to click on the miscellaneous tab and under miscellaneous sheet, you will find your sheet. Um, I'm just going to edit my standard one, which is my DNA3. Um, hit edit. So in here, uh, simply what I'm going to do is scroll down to this. Um, net, everything I create, I normally do this. Uh, this is just the default one. So if I go here and you can see that box around with the um, eight little boxes, uh, I can simply resize that and I might just stretch it out to say here. And I might do the same thing with this one. Um, just take up more space. So by doing this, um, and again, it's probably handy to have all of them in that way. If I just save the database and I'll update this um, project, I'll show you what happens. So um, the first thing you can see, if I click on these, the box is still the same. Um, just a setting so one of the updating projects so again if you hit s for settings and under general updating project you'll notice the text parameters it will say text visibility for symbols uh, what this means is if you've made a change to the text or something like that uh, it will not bring it back to default because obviously um, you know we've changed it in the project but in my case i want to uncheck these and if i update in project it will include the new changes um, so having that setting checked, um, well, let me bring this one back, but this setting that I hit in display, which says enlarge, uh, sorry, uh, resize text to fit text box. If I hit save, you'll notice, um, if I have it unchecked, it will cut the um, text to the box. However, if I have this checked and hit apply, uh, it will automatically resize it. So if I was to hit F2 here and just say, um, assuming I've got a character limit, doesn't matter how long I tend to do it, um, it will continue to resize it and make it smaller and smaller. So it will uh, make sure all these fields fit inside these text boxes and stuff nicely. Uh, the same sort of little principle works for any um, for any any symbol anyway. So if you use or table or anything, if you use the text box in this manner, as well as that setting that says resize text to fit text box, um, then this will happen in this way, nice and neat, and it'll keep everything tidy. I uh, hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask or comment or email, whatever you need. Um, like and subscribe, um, and thanks for watching.